The Teen Titans have been one of DC's most prolific teams for decades. This has led to some great versions of the team, and some not so great. While this iceberg will mainly be focused on the 2003 animated series, there will be several facts from the comics and other media. This iceberg is created by us, and if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more like it. Slade Name Change Slade's codename in the comics is Deathstroke. His real name is Slade Wilson. When the show was being developed, they weren't allowed to use his original codename, as the target demographic was young and the network didn't want death frequently said. Static Shock References The Teen Titans are referenced twice in the Static Shock animated series. The first is in Hard as Nails, when Static asks Batman where Robin is. Batman tells him that he's with the Titans and that he'll meet them someday. The next reference is in Romeo in the Mix, when Gear is mistakenly called Gizmo due to a similar costume color and a focus on technology, and Beast Boy is referenced as the Green One. These references happened at a time early in development for Teen Titans, when it was unknown what connection it may have to the current DCAU. White Raven White Raven is Raven's most powerful form in the 2003 series. She uses it to defeat Trigon, though she never stays in it for long. Raven also used her white cloak in the comics several times, which is meant to represent her being cleansed of Trigon. The Fab Five The Fab Five refers to the original five titans from the 60s. Robin, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, Speedy, and Aqualad. Over the years, these five frequently reunite and reminisce about their time together, as they were all first-generation protégés to their leaguers and started the team. Puffy Ami Yumi Puffy Ami Yumi is a Japanese pop duo who debuted in the U.S. in 2002. They started off known as Puffy, but added both of their names at the end after Puff Daddy's attorneys sent them a cease and desist. They recorded the Teen Titans theme song in English and in Japanese, as well as the opening theme for Superior Defender Gundam Force, and even had their own animated series on Cartoon Network. The Japanese Theme Song Occasionally, episodes of the animated series would feature a Japanese version of the theme song instead of the English one. The Japanese song was usually only in episodes that featured a more comedic and lighthearted tone, with only a few exceptions. The lyrics for the Japanese theme also don't directly translate, but Beast Boy sings the direct translation back to English during the karaoke scene in Trouble in Tokyo. The DC AMU The DC AMU refers to the DC animated movie universe which is a series of films that begin with Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox, and ends with Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War. The Teen Titans are first referenced when Starfire's photo pops up on Nightwing's phone. They later make a full appearance in Justice League vs. Teen Titans, with a lineup consisting of Damian Wayne, Nightwing, Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Blue Beetle. The team returns in Teen Titans, The Judas Contract, with the new addition of Terra. The Titans in the past are also shown in a flashback at the beginning, which included Dick Grayson as Robin, Beast Boy, Kid Flash, Bumblebee, and Speedy. Wonder Girl also joins at the end of the movie, but is given no lines. These Titans appear for a final time in Apocalypse War, helping assist in the final battle. This lineup is made up of Nightwing, Starfire, Robin, Raven, Beast Boy, Blue Beetle, Wonder Girl, Speedy, Bumblebee, and the Wallace West version of Kid Flash. By the end of the film, the only survivors were Raven, Damien, a cyborg Starfire, and a crazed Nightwing, before the Flash changed reality once again and the universe was wiped away. A third film was planned but never materialized. It would have involved the Titans on Tamaran before Nightwing and Starfire's wedding, and Blackfire would have been the main antagonist. Terra Winner Takes All Cameo 
Shortly after Terra returns to the Titans and officially joins the team in Season 2, she is mostly absent from the episode Winner Takes All, not being shown playing the card game with the rest of the team. After the boys free themselves and return to their lives, Starfire and Raven are transported to the same arena with the other female heroes, Terra being the only known one. It is unknown where she was during the majority of the episode, but considering her next appearance is Betrayal, she was likely sending information to Slade. Batman Shadow Cameo While Batman never directly appeared in the 2003 series, his shadow can be seen in the episode Haunted when Raven enters Robin's mind. Robin can be seen swearing an oath to him in what appears to be the Batcave. Injustice Titans The Titans have a pretty rough time in the Injustice universe. During the Joker's attack on Metropolis, Bart Ellen's Kid Flash and Beast Boy were killed. Shortly after, Superboy began opposing Superman's regime, and after a battle with him, Superman pierced Superboy's heart, forcing Connor, Starfire, Red Robin, and Wonder Girl to enter the Phantom Zone to prevent him from dying. Cyborg and Raven were all that was left, and ended up joining Superman's regime, with Raven even embracing her father's influence. After six years and the defeat of Superman's regime, a rescue team is sent to save the Titans trapped in the Phantom Zone. Within seconds, Tim is killed by General Zod, whose heart was later used as a transplant for Connor. Injustice 2 provides two possible endings for the Titans. If Cyborg defeats Brainiac, he would use Brainiac's powers to revive the Titans. If Starfire defeats Brainiac, she starts a new team of Titans, consisting of Blue Beetle, Firestorm, and Supergirl. CN City CN City was the fourth era of Cartoon Network and lasted from 2004 to 2006, with bumpers still being shown until 2007. This era is known for its commercial bumpers, featuring all of Cartoon Network's characters interacting in a CGI city together. This was the era that the majority of Teen Titans run was in, with bumpers featuring them and Titans Tower frequently being shown throughout the show's run. Teen Titans Go! comic. This refers to the tie-in comics for the 2003 series, not the show currently on Cartoon Network. These comics took place in various parts of the show's continuity, but are mostly self-contained one-off stories. They do feature some characters never seen in the series, though, such as Ravager and Wonder Girl. The New 52 The Teen Titans relaunched during The New 52 with a new look and origins for its characters. The new series erased all of the Titans' history, with this being the first Titans team to form. Led by Red Robin, it features Superboy, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, a redesigned Solstice with newcomers Bunker and Skitter. The series received a lot of backlash as fans didn't like the erasure of the Titans' history or changes to origins so it was soon retconned and the history of the old teams were restored. The 2006 Video Game In 2006, Teen Titans released a game on GameCube, PS2, and the Xbox. It features four-player couch co-op with the ability to switch between any of the five main Titans. It also features an arena fighting mode with 31 unlockable characters all of whom have their voice actors from the show, aside from Mad Mod. Red X is Jason Todd Red X's identity was never meant to be revealed on the show. Murakami always stated that he knew who he was, but that it was meant to keep the air of mystery. In recent years, several former crew members confirmed that the identity of Red X was the second Robin, Jason Todd, as many suspected. This year, it Larry was an interdimensional imp that first appeared in the episode Fractured. He is inspired by the Batman character Batmite, and like him, can alter reality at whim. Much like Batmite's feelings on Batman, Larry is the number one fan of Robin. 
In the episode, he reveals his true name, which ends up being Dick Grayson backwards, Robin's real name. Cancelled Judas Contract Film In 2006, an animated film based on the Judas Contract storyline was announced. News was non-existent after that for a while because of DC's senior VP of Creative Affairs said it was put on hold because fan support hadn't been high enough. The film would later show up as an entry in the DC AMU, though it's unfortunate we'll never know what the movie could have been without being tied to that universe. Live Action Set Leaks in 2018, set photos from the live-action Titan series hit the internet with a huge amount of fan backlash. Fans were upset that the characters didn't look comic accurate, and some even hurled racist comments towards Starfire's actress, Anna Diop. Cartoon Network Flash Games This refers to the many Flash games during Teen Titans' time on Cartoon Network. The most notable ones included One on One, which featured each of the Titans in a unique minigame. Battle Blitz was a fighting game that allowed you to play as some villains. Calling All Titans and Tag Team Titans both featured chibi-style Titans fighting through Titans Tower. Beast Boy slash Changeling when Beast Boy left the Doom Patrol and joined the new Teen Titans in the 80s, he changed his codename to Changeling. The creative team did this because they wanted the Titans to feel like teenagers who wanted to be adults. An in-universe reason was given shortly after, when it was revealed that a Doom Patrol villain mocked the name Beast Boy, prompting Gar to change it. He went by Changeling for 20 years until the miniseries titled Beast Boy. In the series, Gar comes out of superhero retirement and the media refers to him as Beast Boy again. He decided to go along with it and hasn't been Changeling since. Coming up next, only on Miguzi. Miguzi. Miguzi was a weekday afternoon block on the Cartoon Network that lasted from 2004 to 2007. It featured underwater alien bumpers and showed mostly action shows. Teen Titans often aired its reruns during this time, being paired alongside shows like Code Lyoko, Totally Spies, and Mucha Lucha. Red Beast Boy. Beast Boy was reintroduced in the New 52 as a member of the Ravagers. Here he was shown with red skin to establish the Red, which is a force that connects all animal life and microorganisms in the universe. He was changed back to green not long after with no real explanation, other than nobody liked it. Popsicles In 2005, Nestle launched a Teen Titans popsicle called Hero Pops. There's a green one for Beast Boy, an orange one for Starfire, red for Robin, purple for Raven, and Cyborg was left out of getting one. Later, Blue Bunny released a sour apple popsicle with gumball eyes that was allegedly supposed to look like Beast Boy. Cancelled Live Action Movie In May 2007, The Hollywood Reporter revealed that a live action Teen Titans movie was in development, though only Robin was confirmed to be in it. Akiva Goldsman and Mark Veridin were penned to write the script, though nothing else ever materialized. Akiva later went on to produce the live-action Titan series 11 years later. Season 5 was going to be 20 episodes. In many interviews, the crew stated that Season 5 was originally going to be 20 episodes before getting cut back to 13, causing them to have to rewrite the arc of their season. Part of the cut of the story involved Slade returning, with writer Rob Hove saying his personal idea was for Slade to enter the Brotherhood of Evil and tell the villains they were working for him. Creator Glenn Murakami also mentioned Slade being involved, and that he wanted to have episodes for Red Star and Thunder and Lightning. DC Nation Shorts In 2011, a series of shorts called New Teen Titans debuted on Cartoon Network's DC Nation block. They were shorter and more comedic, but were closer to the chibi style of animated series, instead of the flash animation style used in Teen Titans Go. 
Many fans expected these shorts to lead into some sort of revival, but that revival was Go. Cancelled TNT Series In 2014, a Variety article announced that TNT would begin development on a live-action Titan series, codenamed Blackbirds. It would feature Nightwing leading Starfire, Raven, Oracle, Hawk, and Dove. In 2015, TNT announced that they wouldn't be going forward with the show, which led to the 2018 Titan series now on HBO Max. Wildfire slash Darkfire Reander is the youngest sibling of Starfire and Blackfire. In the comics, he now uses the name Darkfire. While he doesn't directly appear in the animated series, he does appear in the show's comics with the name Wildfire. Starfire reunites with her brother, who had been sent away from Tamaran to protect the royal line. Not long after that, Wildfire attacks Raven and Cyborg, revealing that he was actually Madame Rouge all along. Starfire realizes that Blackfire had to be the one to assist with the transformation, as Madame Rouge wouldn't have known what her brother looks like. Starfire travels to the prison where Blackfire is held and renounces her as her sister, saying that Wildfire is the only family she has left. Lauren Tom didn't voice her character's final appearances. Voice actress Lauren Tom played both Jinx and Gizmo for the majority of the series, but in their final appearance, Titans Together, Raven's voice actress Tara Strong took both roles over. It's unknown why she didn't reprise them for a final time, but she did return to voice both characters in Teen Titans Go! DC Superhero Girls The Titans make an appearance in both incarnations of DC Superhero Girls. Cyborg, Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy are all featured in Generation 1, though they get a minimal role. The team returns to Generation 2 series this time calling themselves the Tween Titans and taking on a brattier, more antagonistic role. LEGO DTV Appearance Starfire, Beast Boy, and Cyborg all appear in LEGO Justice League Gotham City Breakout, all played by their original voice actors. Robin's voice actor also plays Robin, though it's the Damian Wayne version of the character. DCAU Fan Theory A popular fan theory is that the 2003 series takes place in the DCAU, a shared continuity that starts with Batman the Animated Series and ends with Justice League Unlimited. There seem to be plenty of evidence for this, as the Titans are mentioned in Static Shock and Speedy's portrayal is nearly identical, even having the same voice actor. However, there's many inconsistencies debunking this theory. Wally West is the Flash in the Justice League, and in a flashback we see that he gets his powers as an adult, making it impossible for him to appear as the teenage kid Flash in Teen Titans. The show would also have to be a prequel to Batman the Animated Series, as Robin is depicted as Dick Grayson, and the events of Teen Titans are never mentioned in any way. A stronger theory is that the Teen Titans are connected to both the Batman and the Legion of Superheroes. There's many similarities in art style and tone, and they all aired during the same time period. There's even a Batman cameo in the Teen Titans comic, where his design looks nearly identical to the design from the Batman. Graduation Day Graduation Day was a three-part crossover between the Titans and Young Justice comic titles. It mainly involved a Superman robot killing both Omen and Donna Troy, and led to the disbanding of both teams. Shortly after this, the animated series premiered, and a new Teen Titans comic team was formed. In this team, Starfire, Cyborg, Raven, and Beast Boy would mentor the former Young Justice members as well as take in new members. Titan's original first season ending The first season of the live-action series, Titans, ended with the 11th episode, Dick Grayson, which featured a Trigon-induced hallucination in an attempt to turn Dick against Raven. There was originally supposed to be one more episode, titled Raven, 
The original finale would have featured the final confrontation against Trigon, along with a glimpse at the Nightwing suit, a Doom Patrol appearance, Raven going to Azeroth and returning stronger, and Donna and Cory donning costumes. A lot of footage of the episode was used in the season 2 premiere during the final confrontation with Trigon, but the rest will likely never be shown. Tiny Titans Tiny Titans is a kid-friendly comedy comic that lasted from 2008 to 2012. It featured most of the extended Titans roster as elementary school versions of themselves, with Slade as their principal, and reoccurring gags like Tara throwing rocks at Beast Boy. It's won the Eisner Award for Best Kids Series twice and is often referenced in the mainstream DC comics. Nightstar Marie Grayson is the future daughter of Starfire and Nightwing in the Kingdom Come universe. She has powers like her mother, but retains human skin and hair like her father's. In this universe, Starfire died of a circulatory disease when Marie was young, and later she fell in love with Batman's son, who in this universe is heir to Raj al Ghul. What's in the briefcase? In the season 5 episode, Revved Up, Robin is after the villain Ding Dong Daddy, who's stolen a briefcase containing Robin's most prized possession. Soon after, Red X and other villains join in, all after whatever Robin's prize may be. At the end of the episode, Robin wins his case back through a race and shows the Titans what's inside, leaving the contents a mystery to the audience. Fans have speculated for years what's inside the briefcase, but writer Amy Wolfram confirmed that they were never going to reveal what was inside, though many have their own ideas. TitansGo.net TitansGo.net was a popular fan site for the animated series from around 2003 up until its closure on December 1st, 2011. It featured fan discussion, screen grabs, news, and many detailed interviews with the creative team. The website is now defunct, but can be accessed through the Wayback Machine. GBA Game Sequel While the console game didn't get a sequel, the Game Boy Advance Teen Titans game did. The game was released in 2006, the same year the console game came out, and it is loosely based on the plot of Season 5. It features each of the five Titans solo in specific levels, each taking on a member of the Brotherhood of Evil. Clone Terra. Several years after the Judas contract, when Terra had betrayed the Titans and died, a second Terra appeared, alleging that she was a clone from the future. This was a really confusing way to bring the character back as they later revealed she was from the present and made to think she was from the future, before questioning whether she was a clone at all and then fading off into obscurity. The 2003 cartoon invented Cheshire's Mask. Cheshire has been an established assassin in the DC Comics since her debut in 1983. Though she typically had her green kimono and size, she didn't first get her now iconic cat mask until her cameo appearance in Season 5 of Teen Titans. The mask was later reused for her Young Justice design, and has since carried over into the comics. Machines each sold separately from Bandai. Wonder Girl Embargo There was an embargo in the 2000s preventing either of the Wonder Girls, Donna and Cassandra, from appearing in other media. This kept them out of the 2003 cartoon, though they did sneak in a cameo of Donna in Calling All Titans. Both Wonder Girls would later appear in the tie-in comics, showing what their designs would have been. There was also a secret cameo of Cassandra in the Justice League episode Paradise Lost, when Wonder Woman saves her as a child. Since then, the embargo has been lifted, with both appearing in Young Justice and Donna appearing in the DC AMU and the live-action series. Jericho Sexuality Change Jericho first appeared in the Teen Titans in the early 80s. He could possess people and was revealed to be Deathstroke's son in the series. Creators Marv Wolfman and George Perez discussed having the character be gay during his creation. 
but opted against it because they felt it was a stereotype to have the sensitive artistic character also be gay. Batgirl has never been a titan. None of the three mainline Batgirls have ever been official Titans members. Cassandra did appear in Deathstroke's Titans East as a brainwashed villain, though that isn't an official Titans team. Beth Kane also appeared in a Titans team, though typically as her other alias, Flamebird. Jinx Character Change Many fans remember Jinx as the pink-haired villain turned hero in the animated series. Her comic counterpart is nothing like this, however. She's an older, bald Indian woman who is only ever portrayed as a villain. Gizmo Character Change Gizmo is another famous Titans villain who was changed for the animated series. In the comics, he's a middle-aged dwarf who is eventually killed by Dr. Sivana. Argent Color Change Argent was a Titan who was debuted in 1996 and stayed on the team up until the early 2000s. She could create solid constructs from her silver energy powers. Her name came from the color Argent being a shade of silver. When she was brought over to the animated series, her primary color was changed to red along with her powers. While most fans prefer the animated design, her name doesn't make much sense anymore. Killer Moth lives in the Brady Bunch house. In the episode, Date with Destiny, we can see that the interior and exterior of Killer Moth's house is an exact replica of the Brady Bunch house, and even has the same decor. Cancelled 80s Animated Series In 1983, Hanna-Barbera began production on an animated series based on the new Teen Titans that would have been in the Super Friends universe. The lineup would have included Cyborg, Raven, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, Changeling, and Starfire. Robin would have been absent as he was already on Super Friends, so Wonder Girl would have taken over as leader. Trigon and Blackfire would also have been featured as reoccurring villains, but not much else is known. 1984 Anti-Drug Commercial and The Protector In 1984, Keebler made an anti-drug ad featuring the designs from the 80s cartoon pitch. The commercial features the same lineup, but with a new original character named The Protector, replacing Robin. The commercial was considered lost media for a while, with only screen grabs being online. But in the recent years, it's been partially found, but only certain clips have the audio. Be a hero! Stay Cancelled 90s Animated Series The second attempt at an animated series came in 1996. Artist Tommy Tejeda posted the concept art on his blog, which looks connected to the DCAU. This lineup included Robin, Speedy, Aqualad, and Wonder Girl, with appearances from Aquaman and The Flash. Static Shock Crossover Character designer Derek J. Wyatt said on Twitter that there were plans for a Teen Titans crossover with Static Shock, but that not as much had gone into it as the JLU crossover. It's unknown how it would have worked, as the Teen Titans 2003 show isn't in the DCAU. Justice League Unlimited Crossover Teen Titans character designer Derek J. Wyatt confirmed that work was done on a crossover between the JLU and the Teen Titans. He claimed on Twitter that the Justice League would fight Mad Mod while the Titans would fight Darkseid. Bruce Timm disputed these claims on the anime superhero forums. He claims that WB wanted a two-part crossover, but the crew behind Justice League and the people at Cartoon Network didn't like the idea. He did say that they passed around the concept of doing one half of the Justice League in the Teen Titans art style, and then the Teen Titans in the DCAU art style, though that's as far as they got. Hotspot slash Johto Many fans know Hotspot from the animated series, but he actually debuted in the Teen Titans comics in 1996 under the code name Johto, which is Swahili for heat. When the character was brought over to the animated series, the crew learned that his name was also a homophobic Spanish slur, so the crew came up with Hotspot, and the name carried over to the comics soon after. Scissors, Paper, Stone 
character designer Derek J. Wyatt posted concept art on his blog of four characters he wanted to include in the animated series that never made it in. They were Captain Thug, Pretty Dead Boy, Witchy Poo, and Prosthetic Lass from Adam Warren's Titans, Scissors, Paper, Stone. The characters are from the future and would likely have been involved in a time travel plot. The Superman Aquaman Hour of Adventure The teams first animated in 1967 in Filmation's The Superman Aquaman Hour of Adventure. The team included Speedy, Kid Flash, Aqualad, and Wonder Girl. This would be their last appearance in animation until the 1984 anti-drug ad. Teen Tyrants the Teen Tyrants were evil counterparts from an alternate universe, shown in the animated series Tie and Comics. Their members included Red Robin, Arsenal, Tempest, Red Raven, and Blackfire, though Blackfire was later revealed to be the shapeshifter Gemini. Uncanny X-Men Crossover in 1982, the Uncanny X-Men and the New Teen Titans crossed over to form a single-issue comic. Both series were extremely popular and had critically acclaimed creative teams, which prompted DC and Marvel to work together. This comic featured Darkseid attempting to use the power of the Phoenix to tap into the Source, and both the X-Men and Titans joined forces to stop him. The comic was mostly made by X-Men's creative team, with a planned sequel coming from the Titans team. This sequel was scrapped, however, due to disagreements between companies already cancelling the planned crossover between the Justice League and the Avengers. This would be the last time the two companies would collaborate until 1994's Batman and Punisher crossover. Cartoon Orbit Cartoon Orbit was a gaming community launched on Cartoon Network's website in October 2000. Its main feature was C-Tunes which were digital tokens that featured iconic characters from Cartoon Network shows. Soon after its debut, a game featuring head-to-head -head strategy battles with C-Tunes launched, called G-Tunes. You could earn points during these matches, which could be used at the auction to buy other C-Tunes. The Teen Titans were prominently featured in this, having multiple tokens styled after notable moments. New Tamaranian and Betrothed in the Season 3 episode, Betrothed, there's a single shot of a crowd where one of the characters appears to be topless. Many think that it's a topless woman, but it's likely the Tamaranian shown at the beginning of the episode. The Titans are back. And just in the nick of time. With an all-new season of bad guys getting clocked, faces getting rocked. That's the way we do things. All in the name justice you have no idea what we can handle you know how they do all new episodes of teen titans start saturday september 24th at 8 titans doom patrol Go together everyone achieves more only tsunami Starfire was sold. Blackfire resented her sister because of an illness that prevented her from being able to fly, which cost her the crown. When the two were sent away to train, Blackfire ran off to the Citadel, a fascist interplanetary empire. At the Citadel, Blackfire gave away enough information that the Citadel was able to easily invade Tamarin, and part of their demands for a ceasefire was the enslavement of Starfire. Starfire's father agreed, and Starfire was forced to be a slave under Blackfire up until the point that they were both captured and experimented on, giving Starfire her energy powers and allowing her to escape to Earth. Raven's son, Wild Wild was a magical enemy of the Titans, who was created while Raven was searching for her father. It's revealed that when Raven teleported in her search, she had altered an entire dimension and gave birth to Wild. He considered himself Raven's son and wanted to kill her for no specific reason. Later, the Titans entered his dimension, and Static seemingly destroyed him, as he never returned again. Things Change Things Change was the series finale of Teen Titans. It featured a return of Terra with no clear explanation. 
Many considered this a cliffhanger, as the episode ends without an answer, and with a mysterious new villain. Crew members said the episode idea had been pitched by Murakami since season 3, and said that it felt right to use it as the series finale. The monster is another metaphor for things changing, as its form and abilities change. The Titans have to adapt to fight it. They never intended to give answers, and don't consider it a cliffhanger, leaving the specifics up to viewer interpretation. The tie-in comic would later imply further that this is Terra when they introduce her brother Geoforce. Although a season 6 pitch would later be requested, this episode had already been written and is the intended end of the series. The Final Villain The final villain from Things Changed perplexed fans for years. Since they considered Things Changed to be a cliffhanger, they speculated on its origin and future plans. At the time of its creation, the monster was never intended to be used again, but once a later season 6 pitch started, the crew decided to bring him back, intending to tie him to the introduction of Dimension X. Wonder Girl was in a cult During the Infinite Crisis storyline, Superboy is killed while sacrificing himself to stop Superboy Prime. His girlfriend at the time, Wonder Girl, grieves his loss intensely and ends up being recruited for a cult that claims to be able to bring him back. After a creepy and failed attempt to revive the elongated man's wife, Sue Dibney, Wonder Girl flees and is later seen rejoining the Teen Titans and having a short fling with Robin. A few years later, Cassandra would get her wish during the Blackest Night event when she brings the reanimated corpse of Superboy to the Fortress of Solitude, where he's properly revived. Season 6 Rebrand Pitch After Season 5, when the CN Vice President asked the crew to pitch a rebranded Season 6, writer Amy Wolfram worked with the creator Glenn Murakami and producers on it. The new season would have been titled New Teen Titans and featured a more Justice League Unlimited approach with International Titans Towers. There would have been an underwater tower with Aqualad and a London tower with Argent. The core five would mix and match more with the expanded cast and Speedy would even become Arsenal. They also had plans to bring in Ravager and the villain from the end of season five who would have had ties to Dimension X. Roy Harper's Bad Luck Roy Harper is the civilian name of the Titan Speedy. After the first time the Titans disbanded, Roy found himself alone, as Green Arrow had been going through many life changes himself. During this time, Roy began to turn to drugs and developed a heroin addiction, as shown in 1971's Snowbirds Don't Fly. When Green Arrow discovered this, he kicked him out. Green Lantern Hal Jordan later found Roy on the streets and brought him to Black Canary, where he was rehabilitated. He later went on to reconcile with Green Arrow, though he did permanently end their partnership. After his recovery, he had a child with the assassin Cheshire named Leanne. During a fight with the villain Prometheus, his right arm was severed. During the same fight, Prometheus detonated a bomb, killing his daughter Leanne. After this, Roy grew addicted to pain pills Roy and Leanne have died and been revived a few times since then, but most recently they're both somewhat alive. Deathstroke and Terra Deathstroke's manipulation of Terra is universally known by all Titans fans, though the extent is usually never specified. The 2003 series featured a much more toned-down version of the Judas Contract, portraying the manipulation to be more about teaching her her abilities and not judging her. In the comics, there's a gross implication that their relationship had a romantic element to it. The DCAMU adaptation of the Judas Contract showed a bit of this, but it was still mostly ignored. She was often seen with him in a robe or calling each other pet names. In recent years, Christopher Priest attempted to rectify this a bit by showing Deathstroke explicitly turning down Terra's advances, though he did show him kiss her and then had his butler Wintergreen scold him for it. Recently, DC published Other History of the DC Universe by John Ridley. It's a retelling of some of the most iconic moments of DC's history retold through the eyes of disenfranchised groups. 
In the series, Tara is clearly defined as a victim, and Deathstroke is referred to as a It's currently unknown what elements of this declaration will carry over for characters in the future. Raven brought Tara back. This refers to a theory that Raven was actually the one to bring Tara back to life. In The End Part 3, Raven restores the world to the way it was after defeating Trigon in her White Raven form. Since the entire world was turned to stone, Tara could have unfroze from her stone form with the rest of them. Considering Things Change was an episode thought of all the way back in Season 3, this is less obvious than it should be, and why it remains just a theory. That was the Teen Titans Iceberg. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and comment, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like it.